What's cooking guys and welcome to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be making a soft pillowy garlic naan and this time I'm going to be using yeast. The first time I shared a garlic naan recipe it was just a two ingredient naan recipe that became quite a hit on my channel. You guys love that recipe because it was so easy to make. It was literally two ingredients just some flour and some yogurt and the results for that were just absolutely amazing. This one does have a little more of a process to it and obviously more ingredients but the results are equally amazing and I'm sure you're going to love this recipe too. Do consider subscribing if you are new here and if you would like to join me in my kitchen twice a week and don't forget to hit the thumbs up button to like this video if you enjoyed today's recipe and now let's get cooking. Let's start with three and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour in a medium bowl here and to this I'll add one teaspoon of salt Mix this up with a fork till it's combined and then you can set this aside. Now in a large bowl I'm going to put 1 cup or 8 ounces of lukewarm water, meaning the water temperature should be at 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Then I'm going to add some sugar and I added 1 tablespoon of it. You can even use honey or agave syrup. And then add one pack of instant yeast, which usually has two teaspoons of yeast in it, and the whole pack of it is fine. Mix this up gently with a spoon, and I'm going to let it sit for 5 to 10 minutes until it is frothy and it's activated. So while the yeast is activating for 5 or 10 minutes, let's talk about it for a little bit. If you are not aware of what yeast actually is, yeast is an active ingredient, meaning it feeds off of another ingredient or depends on another ingredient to help it rise or help it to grow, basically. Same way us humans, we need food or water to fuel us or give us energy and to help us grow. The same way yeast is alive and well and it's active and it needs sugar to help it grow or to rise basically and if you are using yeast in a recipe and you don't see sugar in the recipe that means the yeast does not really have anything to thrive on or to feed off of that's why most recipes that include yeast will also have some sort of sweet ingredient in it whether it be sugar a sugar substitute honey agave syrup whatever it is yeast needs something sweet to feed off of so it can help it grow and rise so that was pretty much it I just wanted to give you guys a little information on yeast if you did not know already and now let's get back into the recipe after 5 to 10 minutes your yeast mixture is activated when you see it get frothy like that and you can even smell the yeast in the kitchen it literally smells like a bakery in my kitchen right now and to this I'll add 1 third cup of lukewarm milk 2 tablespoons of plain Greek or regular yogurt And then add 3 tablespoons of oil and I'm using olive oil here but you can use any oil of your choice guys And I'm also adding 2 garlic cloves that I finely minced which will add a hint of garlicky flavor to the dough and now mix this gently to combine the yeast mixture with the oil and the yogurt. Also add in all of your all-purpose flour and salt mixture in there to combine the dry and the wet ingredients. Now I'm going to use my hands to mix this up. You can also use a wooden spoon if you don't want to dirty your hands or a stand mixer with the dough attachment on it. I love using my hands because your hands are the absolute best tools in the kitchen guys. At this stage you can add a little more flour, maybe 3 to 4 tablespoons as you like if you feel that your dough is on the stickier side. But once I started kneading this dough I realized all the wet and dry ratios I used were just perfect. So I won't be adjusting the flour amount in there but if you need to then go ahead and do so. Once the dough is kneaded it's going to be soft and not too sticky just the way I'm showing you here. I'm going to take some oil on my hands and then rub it onto the dough so the dough doesn't dry out or anything. I'm also going to cover the dough with a damp kitchen towel or you can use a damp paper towel and let it sit for 60 to 90 minutes on the counter so it can get a chance to rise. After about 60 to 90 minutes, your dough will have doubled in size as you can see and this is so satisfying for me. Now I'm just going to divide it into equal parts. This really depends on how big or small you want your naans to be. So you can probably get 8 to 10 equal 
balls out of this to make the naan. After dividing the dough, I'm going to cover it again with a damp kitchen towel or paper towel for another 10 to 15 minutes so the balls can now rise. Now let's roll out the dough balls, put some flour on your clean counter surface, then take the non dough and press it down with your hands as needed and do this very gently. And then with a rolling pin, you want to gently roll it out. Not in a back and forth manner, but just gently roll it upwards and then rotate it and then roll it again to flatten it out. If you roll it back and forth really harshly, like when you make roti, it's going to flatten it out too much and we want these to have somewhat of a thickness to them so they can be soft and pillowy. And now heat up a pan or a tawa which is an Indian griddle pan and place your rolled out naan on there once it's heated. Let it cook on medium low heat till you start to see bubbles forming. Then you want to turn this over and let it cook on the other side too till you see some brown spots like you see in the video here. And you'll know it's done once the dough looks like it's cooked and it's fully opaque and the brown spots appear. So now you can remove these off of the heat and repeat the process for all of your naans. Let's make the garlic butter now. I've shared the recipe for this in my two ingredient naan video, but it's basically some butter. You can use any amount you want, depending on how much naan you're making. Also add in some coriander leaves or cilantro leaves, which I chopped finely, and a few garlic cloves, finely chopped or minced. You can use however much you need. And mix this up to combine it. You can even add a little pinch of salt if you need. And now I'm going to slather this garlic butter mixture onto the hot, soft, pillowy naans. These look absolutely amazing, don't they? It is so satisfying for me when these types of foods turn out so perfect, just as I imagined. And if you follow this recipe to the T, you will get the same results in your kitchen. So that is it for this recipe for garlic naan made with yeast. I hope you enjoyed today's video, even though the process for these yeast naans is more lengthy, the results are absolutely amazing. Do try them out and let me know in the comments below how they turn out for you. Or if you want an easier naan recipe, try out my two ingredient naan recipe which will be linked in the description box below. Do subscribe before you leave and if you enjoyed today's video, hit that thumbs up button. It really helps me out here on YouTube. I appreciate you for watching. I'll see you in my next video guys. Until then, take care of yourselves.